So back in 2020, I released a video, how to get into Warcry. And basically what had happened was for the previous year or so, there'd been loads of different expansions. There was uh, new books, there was terrain sets, there was a second kind of core box and that kind of stuff. There lots and lots of new things. And I did a video basically to cut through all the jargon and work out if you actually wanted to play it, what would you need to do to get into it at that point? Now, we're only halfway through the second season of Warcry, but I think it's worth doing a similar sort of video. This is really for two people. It's either for people who want to get into Warcry, but haven't started doing anything yet, and people who have maybe bought one of the sets and are thinking about what to do next. So what we'll do is we'll go through what's been released for season two, and we will have a look at the... The massive amount of stuff that came out in season one and find out if there's anything there that we can look back on and uh, if there's anything worth purchasing that we can actually use in season two as well okay so the first thing we'll get out of the way is the compendium the compendium is basically a, a, a quite chunky publication that's got all of the war bands from age of sigmar and from the first season of war cry it's got all the details in there um there's no campaigns or anything like that it's all straightforward all of those war bands all of the monsters and allies and that kind of stuff that goes with those war bands as well all of that is a compendium now that is all we need to say about the compendium because you do not need it everything that is in this publication is already on the warhammer community website so you don't actually need this yes it's nice to have but the information is already available for free elsewhere and I'll stick a link in the description to those um, those PDFs as well. So Warcry, when it was released, there was one starter box, the Heart of Gur starter box. And that includes everything that you need for the game. It had a core book. It had the Rot and Ruin Warband Tome. Now these tomes, you can buy them separately now, but they basically include... A bit of lore for the setting and the uh, and the warbands themselves. It's got some, see lots of nice artwork and that kind of thing. Some rules for this particular tome. Everything for the warbands. Everything for the terrain that came in that box. Um, and that's about it really. So pretty good, but you'll need it to play with everything that came in that box. Okay, so that Heart of Gur set came with these. It also came with your terrain, your boards, your battle plan cards, your dice, everything you needed to play the game. Okay, and then not long after that, we had the Sundered Fate expansion, which basically gave us two new warbands, some more terrain, this warband tome, which is really a campaign book as well. Some more battle plan cards and all that kind of stuff. There was no dice and there was no core book. So you could buy that separately. So that's the kind of boxes that have come out. Since then, I know that this book is available on its own, as is the core book. And there is another, um, there's another warband that was released on its own. That doesn't appear in any of the books or anything like that. So if you, the only way to get hold of their stats is just with the cards that came in that box as the Legionnaires. But that's everything that's come out so far. Now, when we talk about how to get into it, we need to decide really where we're going to go. So you can, if you want, download the compendium stuff from the website and use models you already own from Age of Sigma or from Season 1 of Warcry. And you can get a copy of the core book and you can start playing Warcry, which is absolutely fantastic. That's great. The only thing you won't have is you won't have battle plan cards. Battle plan cards are part of the game which basically determines the way you're gonna play um, play your match. And so in there you get cards for your victory conditions, everything you need to do to win. You get deployment cards, you get cards for your terrain, and you get what's called a twist card. And that twist card is basically just a, a twist that they add to the game, something, something that shakes things up and changes things a little bit. Those twist cards, those twist cards are fantastic. In fact, the whole idea of battle plan cards, I think, is 
fantastic. It's the, mo it's the most important thing about Warcry for me. So really, if you want to go with a core book and downloading stuff off the uh, Warhammer community website for the compendium, you can start playing Warcry and that's absolutely great, but you will miss out on the battle plan stuff. Now let's say you've got a bit more money and you're thinking about buying one of those two sets. So you've got the um, Heart of Gur, which has got the Rotten Ruin Warband Tome in it, and then you've got the Sun Fate, which has got Stealth and Stone. So have a little bit of a research about the different warbands that are in here. The terrain is much the same. You get a little bit more in Heart of Gur, but the terrain is much of a muchness, so there's not a huge difference between the two. So look at these warbands and figure out which ones you are going to prefer playing. Now, the Heart of Gur set is a little bit more expensive because it comes with the core book. It's also got some dice as well, but I'm assuming you will already have plenty of dice out there. However, the price of the Sundered Fate expansion plus a core book is about the same price as what it would be for the Heart of Gur box anyway. So there's not a huge difference between the two. So if you're going down this route, pick which warbands you like. It's either this and a core book or this Heart of Gur. You've got the core book already. It'll come to about the same sort of money. It won't be a huge difference between the two. Now, very soon, I'm assuming, because they're starting to talk about it on the Warhammer website, there is going to be another big box coming out. And that, again, will be Terrain and two warbands and one of these books. Um, the difference between season one and season two is that each new book, that each new box that comes out has got its own battle plan cards in it that will that are specifically for that set. So it will be specifically for the um, for the terrain that's in that set and will skew well towards whatever warbands are in that set as well. So that tells you what you need to know about that really. Now, in terms of season one, what is there in season one that would be worth bringing over to season two? What could you use? Well, let's have a look at all the different publications that came out. Um, and let's, let's maybe go in order. So there's the core book. Now, it's interesting, really. You could probably go and get one of these core books on eBay for about eight pounds or ten pounds, something like that, really, really cheap. I would think if you want to go as cheap as possible to try and get into Warcry, I would consider getting one of these core books and then just downloading the compendium stuff from the website and just using it with this book. What you will lose from those warbands is that there are reactions which have been added into season two, which you won't get from uh, from using this book. But the difference between season one and season two of Warcry is pretty negligible. It's easily, for the vast majority, 95% is the same game. And the other 5% won't change your mind. If you like season one, you'll like season two. If you don't like it, you won't like it. So that's it. So core, core book only important at all if you want another very very cheap way of getting into the game the first publication that came out for Warcry season one after the core box was the monsters and mercenaries um was the monsters and mercenaries book now this you can ignore because almost everything from here is going to be in the new compendium that's free anyway so, yeah, this had some more stats and that kind of thing. These were monsters that you could um, add into the game. The allies and that, which you could take for each side and all, all, that, all that kind of stuff. That is all now free via the new compendium. There was also three Tome of Champions books. Okay, 2019, 2020 and 2021. They're all very good. They've all got campaigns in them and that kind of thing. A lot of the stuff that was in here was skewed to releases from that year. So it might be things that were either in White Dwarf or on the Warhammer community website. A lot of it got sandwiched into these books. The 2021 is very good. Um, 
for me, if you're going to get one, get this. That is because it is the only publication whatsoever that supports Warcry Catacombs. So there's a Catacombs box, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, this is the only publication that exists that supported anything that was in that in that box set. The 2019 one, I think you can forget largely. There was other things that brought some extra stuff to the game. So, for example, in the original Warcry, in the first core box, there was some uh, there were some chaotic beasts that roamed the land. So they they added elements to the game via the twist card in these in the time of champions specifically the 2020 and 2021 ones there were options to add in things like shambling undead so zombies roaming the, the countryside there was trog offs you could have had in there um there was you know beasts of chaos and that kind of thing that was interesting for that so worth a look for that there was these four different Grand Alliance books. So that was basically Brings of Death was all of the warbands for death collected in one place. These were quite good in that um, you had each individual faction, you had the Flesh Eater Courts, you had a decent bit of information about the Flesh Eater Courts. And when you were done with them all, it had some fated quests and that kind of thing that you could have played. For the stats, ignore it entirely. For the quests, if you can get them and you can get them really cheap, it might be worth it. Um, if you are, if all you want is the stats and all of the information for the warbands, ignore this. Go compendium via the website all the way. You don't need this at all. But each different Grand Alliance does have some interesting um, quest stuff that's in there. Now, there was two other big boxes that came out in the first edition. Just before I go on to them, it's worth remembering that throughout the last edition, there was other things that came out for this game, but not books. So there was terrain sets, which had their own battlefield plans, but the battlefield plans for that were only for the terrain setup. There were no new twist cards or, um, or victory conditions or anything like that. It was only for setting up terrain. But they were great. They were really good. I'll be amazed if you can get hold of any of those now um, for anything like a decent price. I can see them going on eBay at the moment for 140 quid uh, and, and th that sort of money, which is crazy. I think I remember when I bought the sets, I think I didn't pay any more than about £45 for any of them. So if you see them at a decent price, they're well worth picking up just because that terrain will get the battle plan cards just to set up. Um, and it was well worth it just for that. I wish, really, that why doesn't, now that we're into the new season, all those cards, why doesn't Warhammer, or Games Workshop, sorry, why don't you just stick the PDF on the website and just say, all right, this is all out of print and it's gone now. We're on a new set of Warcry or a new season. Here's all the cards that came in those old sets. And so now you can at least use them. The sets aren't available anymore. Why don't you just make those cards available for free? I don't know. I wish they would. The, the only other thing that came out in the last season of Warcry, which would be interesting to pick up, is the Red Harvest expansion and Catacombs. Now, I do know that both are out of print, but I do know that if you look hard enough, you will find them online. There are still boxes out there in the wild, and you can get hold of them. Red Harvest was great. It featured a, a lot of terrain, two decent warbands, um, it was it was a very very big box, a completely different setting to anything that's gone before it. And if I can think rightly, it's a setting that I I've never seen really in a, in fantasy Warhammer before either. Really really unique stuff, very very cool. And then there was Catacombs. Catacombs was basically the dungeon crawler way of playing the game through corridors and in in dungeons and that kind of thing. Again, a very interesting way of playing the game. If you can get either either of these sets at a decent price, um, when they came out, you're able to get them for 100, under 100 quid each. Is worth it. I like I like both of these expansions, and they are well well worth looking at. They are both packed with content. 
My only problem with the Catacombs version was that it didn't have any battle, for, um, battle plan cards. Everything was resourced from this book. Um, and it was all done via... Where are we? Rolling on card tables and that kind of thing. So what I did was I actually um, photocopied this book and started making my own cards and that kind of thing. So everything was in here, but yeah, there was just no physical cards to do it from, um, which was the only problem I had with this this expansion at all. Um, but they are both very good, both packed with content. So just to recap, and we'll go through it very quickly. You can go core book and downloading from the compendium, but you won't get the battle plan cards, but you can still get up, get away with playing some sort of game of Warcry. You have to start making up your own rules. Alternatively, get the core book with the Heart of Gursat, and then you've got absolutely everything you need to play the game, or buy the Sundered Fate box and a core book, again, for the same sort of money. All you'll need to do outside of that to buy some dice. Those of you who do that and like it and want to dip into season one, ignore all of the Grand Alliance books, ignore Mon Monsters and Mercenaries, only consider getting the old core book via eBay if you want an even cheaper way of getting into the game. Consider Catacombs and Red Harvest if you can get them for a reasonable price. And consider Time of Champions if you want to get into the campaigns that are in there. And for me, it goes in order of kind of reverse order of release. 2021 is the best one, followed by 2020, followed by 2019. So I hope that helps any of you who are thinking of getting into the game. If you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. I'll certainly get back and answer as many of them as I can. So thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you later.